get ready. Incidentally, you saw the pay-per-view for Vitaly Klitschko versus Danny Williams. Vitaly, in case you're not totally up to date on this, has the WBC Heavyweight Championship belt, which was previously held by Lennox Lewis. And there's a look at the tail of the tape for Rachman Mian. You can see that uh, Hasim Rachman, by far the more experienced fighter in, against top competition, is two years younger than Cali Mian. Mian with a two and a half inch height advantage. Three inch arm length advantage to Rock, who is the shorter of the two guys by two and a half inches. That's measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Hasim Rachman weighs 232, and that's good conditioning for him. Cali Meehan, big man, 237 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Hasim Rachman, Cali Meehan fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Heavyweight check. Heavyweight check. Here comes Cali Nian, a native New Zealander who fights out of Australia. 69 days ago, he was involved in a fight for the WPO heavyweight title belt against Lehman Brewster. Now, you might remember that last year, Brewster survived long enough to score a knockout win over Vladimir Klitschko, and Klitschko basically exhausted himself hitting Brewster. Nian had pretty much the same experience as he pounded Brewster against the ropes in the eighth round, but then ultimately Brewster carved out enough in the last few rounds to score a one-point decision victory over Mian. Many thought Mian had won the fight. He himself says, I wasn't all that disappointed. I wanted to make an impression, try to set up another big fight. So here comes the other big fight. He broke uh, Brewster's jaw in the process. Brewster, who is uh, sitting ringside tonight, hoping to see his cousin fight, Chris Bird. Is Mian a noteworthily big hitter, Roy? No, I don't think he's noteworthy that big of a hitter, but he has a big guy in front of him tonight who is a, a noteworthy big hitter. So uh, Mihan can come in. He has a possibility of catching Rockman with a good shot if Rockman runs into it. But Rockman is the one who's the big puncher to me tonight. Indeed, Rockman comes in on the strength of three straight second round knockouts. He rededicated himself to his career after a sluggish 10 round decision earlier this year over aged, faded Al Cole. Hasim has told us this before. This time he looks serious about it, Larry. He is until he wins a fight. And then something kicks in, some clock in him that says, I don't have to train as hard for the next guy. That's his MO, has been through much of his career, and he admits it. Held the heavyweight title for seven months from April 21, 2001 to November 17, 2001. He won it on the fifth round knockout of Lennox Lewis. He lost it on the fourth round knockout by Lennox Lewis. And since then, there have been some tumultuous ups and downs for Rachman. Including, of course, that fight he lost to Holyfield when he got the gargoyle on his head, probably the single worst bump we've ever seen on any fighter. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is a WBC IBF Eliminator Heavyweight Contest brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Madison Square Garden and Nemirov, sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout are Joe Dwyer, Tommy Kazmarek, and Julie Letterman. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action inside the ring, Eddie Cotton. And now from Madison Square Garden, 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with yellow, official weight, 237 pounds, professional record, 29 victories, including 23 knockouts with only two defeats. From Sydney, Australia, he's the Asia Pacific champion and a WBC number five ranked heavyweight in the world, Kali Checkmate Me. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold, 
Official weight, 232 pounds. Professional record, 39 victories, including 32 knockouts, with five defeats and one even. From Baltimore, Maryland, the WBC number two ranked heavyweight and former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Hasim The Rock. Rockman. All right, boxers, you receive my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. All right, let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Jim, you forgot to mention the night that Oleg Moskayev deposited Rockman in your lap. There have been a lot of things. <laughs> there, have been, there have been quite a series of tumultuous events in Rockman's career. He took the Moskayev fight, incidentally, thinking that that was going to be a walk in the park, and uh, discovered that Moskayev was a pretty good right-hand puncher. And yes, he skittered through my lap on the way to the concrete floor of the Atlantic City, Con City Convention Hall. He's, he's usually been entertaining. He looks to be in good shape tonight. And you say he's a hard puncher. Go, both hands are just go, with the right hand. Go, he put a good punch with both hands, actually. There's a good jab. He looks like he wants to impose himself on Mian from the get-go. Mian has some boxing ability. Rachman has great athletic skills. He was an outstanding high school football player, has competed in other sports. Were it not for a serious automobile accident that nearly killed him, he might have emerged more quickly as a heavyweight contender. But he's another one of those guys who came to boxing late, although for somebody who didn't go into boxing as a child, his instincts have been fairly good, Roy. Yeah, they've been real good. And the good thing about Rockman is that he's a superior athlete. That's why he was able to catch on to this game so well, because he's definitely a late starter, but he came about so quickly because of his athleticism. A lighter-footed, quicker, more flexible athlete than, for instance, Get Michael back. Grant break. and Jamil McCline, two exactly. other big break. guys who come to the sport from other sports. And he has some intelligence in the ring when he wants to use it. He's got a ton of intelligence outside the ring when he wants to use it. He spent a lifetime avoiding it. Right now, he's got me in on the defensive, trying to figure out where the punches are coming from, not throwing his own. Well, he's playing it small. He came out right away and let me in know that you're in the ring with a real competitor here. You're not in the ring with a guy who's going to let you come in and sneak by. And he's thrown some punches from odd angles, which may have thrown Meehan off just a little bit, too. All right, body shots by Rockman. Meehan comes back with a right hand to the body himself. But I see Rockman is busy. He is moving. He's letting his hands go freely. Looking good. He got his mind right tonight. And Meehan is not laying down either now. Meehan is going to be there. Good body shot by Mian. Under a jab by Rockman. Let him go. Step back, step back, step back. Get off him, get off him. Hard right hand to the body by Rockman. It's Mian's job now to get Rockman's attention with some kind of a punch Let's go. Get up, get to up. slow his charge. If he can't do it, it's going to be either a long night for him or a short night for him. Let him go, let him go, let him go! Let him go! Stop, stop, stop! Stop holding, stop. Ten! Very good round for Rockman. Can he sustain it? Okay. I want you to cut him off. Keep stepping over. You force him around one way. He's going to the right. I want you to step over. Keep cutting him off. Okay. And just keep using that jab to the body and keep jabbing to the head. Okay. Okay. And Penny, you're doing a good job ducking those ducking those overhand rights. That's what he's doing. Them nice, but it's got to be fast and it's got to be sharp. Okay. And look for a few simple right hands. A few simple right hands. Set it up. Set it up. Okay. 
Set it up with front jab. Nice firm jab, mate. Nice it's firm right jab. Good, no, those right are good, mate, to the body. You, you don't need to win this fight in, in the first rounds, mate, OK? So just feel comfortable used to it, OK? Nice and sharp. Second time. Just a few years ago, Mian was uh, a garbage man and a bouncer at a bar Cut. to support his boxing. Last year, as a matter of fact, 2003. He was involved in both those jobs at the same time. Because if you're fighting as a heavyweight in Australia, competition is sparse. In fact, of Cali Meehan's 29 wins, seven of them stop have come stop, against stop, the stop, same stop. two fighters. One guy he's knocked out four times, another guy he has two decisions and a knockout against. I thought you were going to say against the same two kangaroos. <laughs> Pretty much. The same two dingoes is what I meant. He's knocked out a dingo named Colin Wilson four times. And uh, he has beaten a wallaby named Tone Fiso three times. You know, there are some pretty good fighters over there in uh, Australia, though. I know a guy by the name of Denny Green, another guy by the name of Anthony Mundine, and of course, y'all know Costa Yazoo. Costa Yazoo with another sensational performance last week in knocking out Charmbay Mitchell in three, and many, many ring experts, in fact, a majority in the media poll had picked Charmbay to win. Costa Yazoo is a 140 pound fighter who hits like a heavyweight. Yes, he does. So Callie Meehan's corner asked for good firm jabs and it's some solid right hands and what they've gotten instead is a bloody nose from Hasim Rahman's excellent jab and right hand. Well, he's landed a couple of clean punches, but they haven't made much of an impression on Rahman. Yeah, one of the, we talked about all of Rahman's tumultuous experiences. One of them was a shootout with hard punching Corey Sanders in which both fighters flirted with knockouts for five or six rounds before Sanders ran out of gas and Rockman no, no, eventually on, finished no, him. But already it's clear that Mian is nowhere near the kind of puncher Corey Sanders is. Not almost. Let him go, stop, stop. Let him go. Come on, Cal, And that fight, and by the way, Jim, was one of my favorite heavyweight fights in the last few years. Gunfight at the Atlantic City Corral. That's what it was. <laughs> stop, 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 let him go. Pick him up, pick him up, come on. Let's go. What Rockman is doing here, though, is just trying to impose his wheel on Meehan. Oh, good shot. All right, stop, stop. He obviously did his homework. He saw that by Booster letting his man come at him, Meehan's better when he comes forward. That hurt him. The overhand right hurt him bad. He's yeah. wobbled Cali Meehan here, and he's got 30 seconds left in the second round as he attacks him against the ropes. I see Rockman's just too quick. Way too quick for Cali Mia. Too powerful. And Cali doesn't hit hard enough to keep Rockman off of him. That's right. Rockman is pounding right, Mian from stop pillar stop to post. And you saw Cali Mian land a solid right hand out of the corner. Rockman didn't even back up. <laughs> that was almost a 10 8 round. Maybe some people will score it that way. Clean this corner up when you're done. For sure. It's no there, mate. Wipe it off. Come just go there, bro. Just keep that in there. Just keep that in there. Open them eyes up, mate. You've got to look for them shots coming, OK? Really open them eyes up and be smart defensively, OK? And control that breathing, Carly. You've got to really control that breathing, OK? OK, you got caught with a few shots here, so really look for his shots coming. OK, look for his shots coming, be nice and defensive, and box him, man. Box him, box him, box him. He's caught you with some good shots then. He see right when putting the pressure on. There he lands that hard jab. You asked if he had power in both hands. That was the jab that hurt me, and now he's really after him. That was a good right hand high on the top of the head. The only reason me and probably didn't go down is because it was so high on the head. In the second round, Hasim Rahman by CompuBox count landed 16 out of 29 power shots, 14 out of 19 in the last minute of the round. And it was interesting, Cali Meehan's trainer in effect asked him to be more defensive. I'm not sure that's the right plan. No, I don't think that's the right plan at all. I mean, they're asking for trouble if he's going to stand back and invite Rockman to keep coming at it. Good body shot by the Rock. All right, stop right there, stop. Come on, Cal, you got to let him go. You got to stop holding, too. Well, Rockman couldn't get stop, stop right there. a victory over David Tua in two tries. Tua 
coming from Tahiti by way of us of uh, New Zealand where Mian was born. Um, but maybe he's going to get one of those South Asian trophies tonight or two of the different animal though. Two, two of the box punches just as hard as any other heavyweight in the division right now. At that time he did. And Sir? this cat doesn't punch that hard. Let him go, let him go, let him go, stop him, come on. Well, of course, Rockman clearly outboxed David Tua in the first eight rounds of their first fight in Miami before Tua was allowed to land the left hook after the bell at the end of the eighth round, and that completely changed the fight. Stop, stop. Rockman ultimately was the knockout loser in the fight, but he has always said that had it been properly refereed, he was going to win easily. Then, when they fought in Philadelphia last year, Rockman showed up at an out of shape 270 pounds, looked as though he had given the fight away to Tua before they even started, and proceeded to outbox him so severely that Stop most right thought there. he deserved to win the fight. I thought he won the fight. If it was a draw. In, if he'd have been in shape, it would have been easy. Tonight he's in shape. And tonight, so far, it has been relatively easy in the first two and a half go, rounds go, against Cali Let him go, Cal. Let him go. Mian is uh, the most unusual suspect on the card tonight, but he is a suspect nonetheless. He's taken a beating. Good shot. And that was a hard right hand to the yeah, top of the head. Yeah. That might have almost finished things. And this thing, of, this thing of being more defensive and watching for the punches to come isn't working. <laughs> Kelly Mian's going to have to fight his way out of trouble here, or else he's going to go down. He's having a hard time, though, Jim. Stop, 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 stop. He got a lot of pressure on his head right now. Roy, I've always thought that Hasim Rahman had the physical stuff to become the heavyweight champion. And he did. That's why he became the heavyweight champion. Let him go. Come on, I told you he's an go. athlete first. He was an athlete before he was a boxer. And that was a major point for him. That's another hard right hand. Stop, stop, stop. I'm impressed with his work ethic tonight. Last preliminary fight before our pay-per-view card began tonight matched Devarrell Williamson, also called the Touch of Sleep, recent loser to Vladimir Klitschko against Oliver McCall. Remember McCall who knocked out Lennox Lewis way back in 1993 and then later lost to Lewis in a fight in which he walked around the ring crying and basically had a nervous breakdown. McCall, after a stint in prison, is out on parole and he and Williamson fought a rough, physical, ugly, toe-to-toe -to -toe fight in which Devarrell Williamson, surprisingly to me, became the aggressor and chased Oliver McCall around the ring and ultimately wound up getting a unanimous decision in the fight. Surprise you, Roy? Yes, it surprised me because I thought uh, it would be more like a split decision instead of a uh, unanimous, but who knows? In other words, you thought that uh, McCall was close enough to winning the fight. Maybe Not a draw would have been better? Draw, I thought it was about a draw, yeah. I'll have a call. Give me a break. But Williamson won the fight. And here we are in the fourth round, so it's time to say, Harold, how have you scored the first three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Go, three to nothing. 30 to 27, Hasim Rahman. Remember what about that 10-8 round? Larry, when a guy punches back, that generally eliminates the 10-8 round. Go, In other words, go, if one go. guy's beat the other guy bad, you score a 10-8. But if the opponent starts to punch back, it becomes 10-9 again. Hasim Rahman landed that big right hand over the top. Kelly Meehan looks like he's gasping for air. And I gotta tell you, Eddie Cotton's a very good referee, but he's gotta stop yelling break, and he's gotta pull these guys apart because they're going to lay at each other all he has to physically separate them. I agree with you. Many referees are reluctant to step between big men. Stop, 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 stop. That's one of the reasons that referee Randy Neiman is prized on the East Coast. Newman, he'll be, he's the one who will be refereeing the fight later tonight between Andrew Galata and John Ruiz. He said the word hold. <laughs> and of course, that's also partially the job of Jay Nady in Las Vegas is to get between big men and pull them apart. And Jay Nady did a good job of keeping Ruiz off of Roy Jones. Yeah, Kevin Meehan just landed a good right uppercut too that we missed. I missed it. <laughs> you saw it. Best punch of the fight so far for Meehan? I think so. He got a quick taking his right body shot though. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I got him. I got him. The right that Rockman is landing to the body is a very good punch for Rockman. I agree with Harold. Me, me looks exhausted, Roy. If you keep taking that right body shot, you, you're going to see <laughs> that he is exhausted, not looks. <laughs> is totally confident tonight. And he's busy, that's what I like about it. Just hammering Kelly oh, here. Meehan almost went down then. His legs are wobbly. Look at him holding the top rope there. Oh, good shot. That was some right hand. Good uppercut. Rockman's really mixing up good tonight. Now Meehan's trying to fight his way out. He can't stop this. You wonder when Eddie Patton might stop this. No, he won't stop it because Mia is fighting back. That's a good point. Come on, come on, come on. Out of here. Let's go. Mia smiles at Rockman. He's just saying, oh, good shot. Him. Good body shot. He wants to go down from that body shot real bad. He don't want to go down, but that body shot took, oh, good, another body shot. Oh, another good body shot. Well, I guess Callie Mia can take some punishment. He won't keep taking it, though. He's going to stop it shortly. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, back and makes it out of the round by throwing that one right hand to the body. It's... He's about finished. And his corner says we're not going to send him out again. The trainer just waved his hand to the referee, Eddie Cotton, and that's the end of that. Knockout victory for Hasim Rahman. Kelly Meehan's trainer, Mark Jansen, stepped into the ring and waved his arm, saying, we're not going to go through that again. And I think that was a pretty good choice. Right? I think that was a very wise choice. He was taking entirely too many power punches. He had been taking too many already, and it was just time to say enough is enough. It was dangerous. So Rockman closed the show, landing by CompuBox count 47 of 61 power punches in that round. In other words, he brutalized it. Here's another look at the end of the fight. And Roy, Callie Meehan held his own against Lehman Brewster, who has the WBO belt. So Rachman just made Brewster look pretty bad. Well, you can't really say that because Styles make fights, although on the other hand, Rachman was an aggressive toward, uh, fighter towards Meehan, who's a taller fighter, so you got to take him out of his element. Rachman didn't let him stay outside and do what he wanted to do. Whereas uh, the other Lehman cat, Brewster. Lehman Brewster stayed out and let him do what he wanted to do, let him use his reach, and let him fight his style of fighting, and it made it tougher for Lehman Brewster than it was for Rockman. Great stuff, Roy. Got to do your homework. Great stuff. And Rockman did it this time. So another outstanding performance in the up, down, up, down, kaleidoscopic career of Hasim Rockman as he looks the best he's looked since he knocked out Lewis in South Africa in April of 2001. And I agree with you on that because the, the most impressive thing to me was that he went from the body and uh, from the body to the head. Let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, referee Eddie Cotton, acting on the request of Kelly Meehan's corner, calls a halt to this bout. The official time, it ends at the end of the fourth round with a TKO, the winner, and he is back. He has seen the Rock Rockman. CompuBox numbers in what was a wipeout for Hasim Rahman. He lands nearly four times as many punches. He throws nearly 100 more punches in only three rounds. And he lands nearly 60% of his punches in beating up Cali Meehan pretty badly. Power punches, Rahman 85 out of 138. In other words, he was landing most of what he threw and Meehan just couldn't stop him. And now let's go to Larry Merchant, who's standing by with Rock. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Rock. Thank you, Mr. Merch. You said you were going to reinvent yourself. Can I do a what good did job? You, what did you mean Can by that? Can I do that? a good job? I went back to the gym. I lied with my promoter and my manager. We set up a beautiful plan, take some low budget, fights along the way to build our way back up so I can stay in the gym and train real hard and get focused on winning the heavyweight title. Right, I yeah. forgot that I wasn't a champ no more. But I'm on my way back. In, your, in the past, your problem has been you could fight one or two fights in a row, and then you'd 
take it easy and not take it seriously. Have you re reinvented yourself in that way? No, I'm ready to fight one of these champions on this card tonight. I'm ready. I stay right here. Let one of them come out. We can do it tonight. I'm ready. I'm focused on full-time fighting. Who is your preference to fight next? Let's go. Ruiz Glada winner. It doesn't matter. Whoever, whoever make the most money to me, whoever will bring the most money to you today. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Thank you very much, Rock. That's it. Great fight. Sharif, we made it look easy, baby. <laughs> All right, Don King, are you going to continue to promote Evander Holyfield, who says he still wants to fight? I don't know. I have to talk to Evander and find out what he wants to do. Right now, I'm celebrating Rockbond's victory. Rockbond is getting ready to go was for the... Was it pretty, Don? It was very, very pretty. All right, exactly. I, I know you want to talk yeah. about him, but Evander Holyfield took a bad licking. You're his promoter. Do you think he should keep fighting? Do you want to represent him in the ring? I think Evander Holyfield was a great, great fighter. He was the warrior. I think that's something he got to talk to himself and his guard to find out what he wants to do. Right now, I want to take Rock and him and go to Dubai and see Sheikh uh, uh, Mohammed and, 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 and put together some good shows for are us you, are in you, Dubai. You know are are I mean? you saying you will continue to... I'm not to... saying one way or another. I think that's a decision for advantage to But if he, if he decides to fight, you'll continue to promote him. Well, I think me and Evander have to have a talk, but I think it's Evander's decision. He makes the final decision, not me. I'm just a promoter. What is your preference for his next fight? His next fight, he's, like he said, he'll take any one of them, any one of the champs tonight, or Vitaly Klitschko. And that's what we're looking for. Vitaly, the winner. It doesn't have to be Vitaly because Williams may beat Vitaly. And if Danny Williams beats him, the winner of that fight. That's what we want. But you, would you prefer him that fight or to fight the winner of the Bird fight tonight and the Ruiz fight tonight? I think the winner of the Danny Williams and, and, and Klitschko fight would be my preference, you know what I mean? But then we can do the tournament with all of them. Right now, that's well, the only one that's laying out. You know that ain't going to happen, Don, because the German promoters have told me that, that you would only uh, have a fight with, uh, with your titleist and Klitschko if you could get options on Klitschko. Absolutely not true. Categorically not true. Told Ross Greenberg it didn't happen. Told uh, Bob Tapp it wouldn't happen. We don't want no option. We'll knock him out. So that's not a problem about that. All we want to do is to get in the ring and fight. Don't use no excuses about options because that ain't what's happening. Right now we want to go to South Florida. We got a big venue down there. We want to bring big time boxing back to South Florida and to go to Dubai and to China. So we're on, we on an excursion now. Thank you very yeah. much, Don. Jim. All right, a look across the river from New Jersey to Manhattan. The lights of the city shining brightly on this crystal clear night. Still to come, Chris Bird defends the IBF heavyweight belt against Jamil McCline. Bird has struggled in his last two fights. McCline claims that he is ready now to do what he didn't do two years ago against Vladimir Klitschko, meaning commit. And then there's Andrew Galata, who some thought should be committed, but who is instead recommitted to his boxing career and will now make the commitment of fighting John Ruiz, who is as difficult to fight against as anybody in the division. And if you haven't seen him, you'll see.